Hi, how are you? My name is Kimberly Lee, and this is your Empowered Lifestyle, where you can live above anything that is trying to rid you powerless by faith in God and faith in yourself. Uh, my coaching business is Your Empowered Lifestyle, where I love to take people from their pain points to their power thoughts and into a life filled with purpose. I'm also a minister, a Christian minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And um, from time to time, I like to hop on when I'm in the Word and I'm really inspired. And so that is what we're doing here tonight. Um, I am in First Thessalonians <clears throat> chapter 2, um, and I'm going to read about 10 verses, and then we're going to talk a little bit. And as always, I hope that something that I say um, by God's Spirit encourages you, edifies you, comforts you, builds you up. That is what I am ultimately called to do. Ultimately, we are called to, um, our purpose is to serve God, is to worship God. That is our ultimate purpose. Um, I am called to edify, to encourage, um, and, and to bring comfort to people. And so that is what, um, my goal is here tonight. So let's get right to it. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 and Paul is going over Apostle Paul is going over his conduct even in times of turmoil and this spoke to me I believe because 2020 has been a year of knockout blows sneak attacks <laughs> um, being weary being tired and it's important that we are aware of where we are and that we can weigh in on where we are and get the help we need from God you know and from others that are in our circle and so I want to read a little bit and then I'll talk a little bit um, and if you're just joining in live thank you for joining in I appreciate you for joining in with me tonight um, and those of you that are gonna that are gonna join in on the replay Thank you for spending time with me tonight. All right. So Paul says, For you yourselves know, brethren, that our coming to you was not in vain. Our serving the Lord, our preaching the gospel, our serving people is not in vain. Glory to God. Um, we have a reward here and we have a reward eternally in heaven. But even after we had suffered before and were spitefully treated at Philippi, as you know, we were bold in our God to speak to you the gospel of God in much conflict. And this really resonates with me because a lot of times I think that we feel like everything is supposed to be peachy keen. Everything is going to be peachy keen <laughs> as we are Christians, believe it, believers, living for the Lord, preaching the gospel. And this verse just wakes us up. Apostle Paul is saying, you know what? I preach the gospel even in conflict, right? I'm instant, I'm in season and out of season. I'm ready to go. And I like what um, the Bible is teaching us. There may be some conflict, but don't give up on your call. Don't give up on preaching the gospel. Don't give up on God. Be steadfast in your faith, right? You've been running, running, running. You have to ask yourself, what is hindering me? What is hindering me? Okay, so he goes on to say, for our exhortation did not come from error or uncleanness. He's saying, look at my conduct, even through the conflict. I'm not in error. I'm not in uncleanness. A lot of times we see today that people have exchanged the gospel for money, for status, uh, for covetousness, uh, for platforms. Apostle Paul is giving us a great example of what to do even when we are in turmoil within ourselves even when we are in conflict in the world there's there's external conflict going on what did he say he said i didn't preach the gospel from a place of error i didn't preach the gospel from a place of uncleanness nor was it in deceit i i let the truth lead and this is such a great encouragement to me, and I hope it is to you tonight, to let the truth lead out in your belief systems, in your mind, and in your actions. Yes, there's gonna, yes there is conflict. 2020 has been a whole conflict, just a, just a whole one. <laughs> a whole conflict, 2020, right? 
But Apostle Paul is reminding us that even when conflict is there, what did he say? He said, when I came to exhort, exhort you, right? When I came to plead with you, when I came to call you near to God through the gospel, the preaching of the gospel, I didn't do it in deceit, right? I didn't do it um, from error. I didn't do it in uncleanness. I did it in truth. And he is teaching us how we need to be. Whatever we're doing needs to come from a place of truth right? God's truth. Um, but as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel, even so we speak, right? Even so we speak, not as pleasing men, but God who tests our hearts. What is he saying? Even in conflict, I'm reminding myself who has called me. It's God. He said, we've been approved by God to do this. And sometimes we have to remind ourselves of that, right? Because <laughs> you can, you know, be a Christian, be saved, be in the Lord for so long, and you have to remind yourself, right? Because we can have, we can have seeds of doubt planted in us or, or so much can be going on externally around us that we forget or we're not dwelling on the fact that, hey, I didn't call myself. Yeah, all this conflict is going on. I didn't create me. I didn't make me. I didn't call me. I didn't qualify me. God did. Right? That shifts the whole balance of power. God called me. So let me reach and lean into God. Lean into his truth. And sometimes we have to shake ourselves and get back to foundational things. Get back to um, elementary things. To remind us of what is important, right? To remind us. We've seen people this year fighting over wearing a mask. Well, well what is really important? Life or you went in the argument about the mask? We, you know, let's weigh in. We got to weigh in. And this is what we see Apostle Paul doing here. Weighing in that even though there's conflict going on, even though people were treating me bad in the last place we were at, I am yet doing this with intact and integrity are we preaching god's word are we living a life before you intact and integrity or with tact and integrity and the title of this is weigh in you have to weigh in at a certain weight to be able to box at certain degrees and if you don't weigh enough you can't fight in that particular you can't fight as a heavyweight if you don't weigh enough and so sometimes we need to be weighed in right? What are the things we need to tweak in our lives to be able to weigh in, to fight and contend and, and do what we need to do for God at that level? Do we need to, to begin to eat a certain way, eat his word, take in his word, take in fellowship with other believers, you know, get in things that support us and support our growth and cultivate our growth? We got to weigh in on where we are, Right. So Apostle Paul is teaching us even in conflict, he's saying, look, <laughs> I did this in truth, even in conflict. OK, 2020, I'm going to do this with tact and integrity and I'm going to finish strong. That's what he's teaching us here tonight. Um, he goes on to say, for neither at any time did we use flattering words, as you know nor a cloak for covetous, covetousness, God is a witness. So he's naming all of these things. He's saying, we let in truth in preaching the gospel. We didn't use covetous, covetousness. We didn't come here wanting what somebody else had. We came here under the authority and the call of God to do what we have been called to do. And that's enough. That's enough, right? That's enough. Um, and he said, we didn't come here with flattering words. I don't need to talk my way into a position. I'm just, I'm here to preach the gospel in truth. Um, and, and he is teaching us tonight the posture and the position of our heart, of our mind, our thoughts, our behaviors, what it should be as believers. He's talking to the Thessalonians saying, look, um, nor do we seek any glory from men. He's saying, look, I'm here. I'm approved by God. I'm here to preach the gospel and I'm not seeking glory from you. It's the same thing Jesus said in the gospels. I'm not seeking glory from you. <laughs> I don't need to seek glory from you. And, uh, and, and we see a lot today how we're looking for glory from each other. We can't 
manufacture, well, I guess we can, we can kind of manufacture up, you know, glory. Um, man can do that. You know, I can put you on this platform or I can network my way into this or I can talk my way into this. Believe me, you don't want it that way. You want to do it. We want to do it like Apostle Paul is doing it in truth. This uh, way of a believer, this Christian walk, we want to do it in truth, right? He's showing us how to act, right? He's saying, look, get some act right here. <laughs> um, we didn't seek any glory from men, either from you or from others, when we might have made demands as apostles of Christ. He's saying, as an apostle, I could have made certain demands, but I didn't, okay? I love Apostle Paul here because as a leader, he is modeling what needs to be seen out of the church, out of the Thessalonian church. He's modeling that, right? And that's what we should do as leaders. What we want to see out of people, we don't crack the whip, but we model that. And then we walk alongside people till they get it. Then we take the training wheels off, boom, and they're gone, right? They're gone in their own sphere of leaders, leadership. My view of leadership is I'm not looking to create servants, right, out of the employees, my, my people that directly report to me. I tell my employees all the time, I don't want anybody to know who the manager is. You know why? Because that means that we've all accepted that we are leaders in some right. And we're taking ownership of our positions. Woo, glory to God. I felt that. My God, today. Thank you, Jesus. Wherever we're a leader at, our belief system, our core values, and our actions should line up with that. But when you're on a team and you don't think you're a leader, you do whatever. Baby, you will do whatever. Whether it's in a relationship, a family, a, a work team. When you don't own your leadership within the team, right? Because we're all in some way in authority, under authority. When you don't own that, then you'll do whatever you show up late, right? You'll spend excess that you're not supposed to spend. You'll say whatever. Why? Because you're not owning your leadership. Apostle Paul is teaching us here that, look, I'm owning my leadership. I'm, I'm taking accountability of my conduct, even in a crisis. He goes on to say, um, nor do we see glory from men, either from you or from others, when we might have made demands as apostles of Christ, but we were gentle among you, just as a nursing mother cherishes her own children. So affectionately longing for you, we were well pleased to impart to you not only the gospel, <clears throat> we're almost to that verse, not only the gospel of God, but also our own lives, right? Here again, he's leading by example. He's saying, listen, church, I didn't just impart the gospel, the word to you, but I imparted my life, right? That speaks of discipleship. I'm walking in this with you. I'm in this with you. I'm imparting my life, what I'm walking through, what I'm going through, sharing my, my wisdom, how I'm doing life, uh, what terms I'm doing life on, how I'm doing that to glorify God. I'm also imparting that. I'm imparting some good things unto you because you have become dear to us. There was a relationship that was created. And Apostle Paul is saying, look, you are dear to us. And that's why we are modeling this leadership behavior before you. You're dear to us. We don't want to act any kind of way. And it really speaks so loudly because it's like when someone is really dear to you, you won't have the attitude, oh, well, that's just me. You know, you get whatever. No, you will course correct and you will self correct as believers by the power of the Holy Ghost. And you will become self aware of, hey, you know, I need to change that in my attitude. You know, I need to stop doing that and switch it up to this to align it with the word of God. All right. Um, so again, Paul is leading by example. 
He's saying, for you remember, brethren, our labor and toil, for, <clears throat> pardon me, for laboring night and day, that we, not, that we might not be a burden to any of you. We preach to you the gospel of God. You are witnesses, and God also, how devoutly and justly and blamelessly we behaved ourselves <laughs> among you. He said, you are witnesses, and so is God, how devout, devoutly, justly, and blamelessly we behaved ourselves. Paul is explaining here, we didn't only preach the gospel and impart to you <clears throat> some good things from our lives. We worked a job. <clears throat> we worked a job. <laughs> we didn't come here begging. We didn't, we didn't, you know, put out our cash app. We didn't put out our Zelle. We didn't put out our PayPal. We worked in ministry and we worked because we didn't want to be a burden to you okay now he is leading by example this is apostle paul um now we go into 11 <clears throat> as you know how we exhort it that means to plead to call near i have some notes here we comfort it that word means to relate to um to be near, to console, <clears throat> and we charged you with some things to do. We summoned you to be a witness, okay? I'm preaching the gospel, now I'm summoning you to be a witness of what you need to do. Um, it, that word also means to testify. Um, he's saying, we did all of that. We exhorted, we comforted, and we charged every one of you as a father does his own children. Look at how he is speaking of the relationship, like a family relationship. Earlier in, in the verses he talked about, he was treating them as a mother would treat a small child. Now he's saying, as a father, we're exhorting you, we're encouraging you. As a father, we are comforting you. As a father, we're charging you, this is what you need to do. These are the things you need to do in this house, okay? By the time I get home from work, right? Um, and why, why is he saying to do all of that? That you would walk worthy of God, that you would walk worthy. Um, look up this word. <clears throat> um, and it is this, give me one second. Um, worthy. All right. Um, okay, here we go. Word that you will walk worthy, um, or worthily. Um, it comes from a Greek word, axios, viewed as becoming becoming that you would walk worthy so that says to me that i always need to look at myself i always need to be becoming i always need to be working out my salvation Woo, glory to god i felt that thank you jesus hallelujah <laughs> the whole minister coach and all of that i felt that <laughs> um we need to be viewed as becoming I posted something earlier this week that says, um, choose becoming over performing, right? And that's what this feels like. Apostle Paul is laying out for them. We don't, we're not performing. So we don't want you performing. We want you constantly becoming, growing up into the stature of the Lord Jesus Christ. Even while conflict is going on, check yourself, check yourself. A lot of times we're so concerned. We're concerned about the body of Christ at large, and that's good. We're concerned about everybody else. But if 2020 has been nothing else, it should have been a time of reflection for us. A time where we can look in reflection and check ourselves and check our behavior. You know, I was just thinking to myself, I'm like, gosh, you know, I have been spending a lot of time by myself. I'm really able to see my habits. Like, <laughs> like I need to pick that up off the floor. Like, I need to pick that shirt up. It's been there for two days, right? And so I've been able to revisit some habits and change them and align them so that when I need to step into a momentum of doing something, I'm not worried about, oh my gosh, you know, I didn't clean up last week. And no, look, I got to check myself and be ready for momentum. Be ready for the advancement of God. Be ready for the placement of God. Be ready for the move of God. So worthy, um, viewed as becoming suitable. 
because it's recognized as fitting. So Paul is <clears throat> encouraging them to walk worthy of God, walk worthy of the call of God. He says that you would walk worthy of God who calls you. So this makes me think we got to weigh in, right? We need to, like, God tells us to ask for what we want, and we should. But if we find ourselves in a place of whining, we need to weigh in. Like, is that walking worthy of the big, big God that I serve? Now, I'm not saying that we cannot feel because we need to be self-aware and we need to be in touch with what we're feeling the only way you're going to heal is to get in touch with those feelings and be able to get that stuff up and out whether it's to god in prayer on the altar or whether it's to a therapist or you know a support system get you know get that up and out but when we cross over into a place of um you know whining and just not tapping into who we are in God and what God has done for us, then we're not walking worthy of that, worthy of that. That means there's been a disconnect somewhere. If we're, you know, always confused, we're whining, we're upset, you know, we're not um, walking in the strength of the Lord as we should. Because what I really feel in my heart that the Lord is saying is a lot of us as mature believers, we should be a lot farther along than where we are and we got to get our weight up we got to get our weight up not just for right now but for the days ahead we got to get our weight up if you still fighting as uh i don't know what the levels are but you're still fighting as a midi a middle weight and you should be fighting as a heavyweight right you you're still on the two sentences in your business plan and you should have the business plan finished right you're still thinking about the website and you should already have the website done. You got to get your weight up. Come on, glory to God. You got to get your weight up. So that when that God momentum hits, you are ready. Your coffers are already filled. Your contracts are done. It's, it's done. It's finished. Your YouTube page is up. Your nonprofit is ready. Whatever it is. Whatever it is. Your house is clean so that, you know, your family's flowing. Whatever it is for you, you got to get your weight up. We got to get our weight up, right? Build that muscle. Build that muscle. One thing I love about muscle is it has memory. So even if I don't work out like I'm supposed to, once I get in there, that muscle picks it right up. Okay? So he's saying so that you would, man, I feel the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. So that you will walk worthy of God. Who calls you? And when the scripture says calls you right here, this is a continual calling. A continual calling, right? Until we are going home to be with Jesus, God's going to continually be calling us to become more and more like his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to be um, conformed to the image of his son, right? His dear son, the Lord Jesus Christ. To walk worthy of God who calls you into his own kingdom. Into his own kingdom and glory is what the verse says. Um, and into his own kingdom. Um, my notes here says. Um, da, 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 the rule of Christ in my heart. Right. So he's constantly calling us to have the rule of Christ in our heart. In our mind. In our heart. In our actions. In our behaviors. The rule of God. Right. This, uh, the kingdom of God talks about the rule and the reign of God. That should be is what is ruling us. That kingdom thoughts, kingdom beliefs as, as kingdom citizens. How do kingdom citizens act? And this is what Apostle Paul was sharing with the Thessalonians. This is how you act, behave, even with conflict going on. And we have witnesses. You are a witness. And God is our witness. I was thinking last week, or I was reading last week in, um, gosh, was it Jeremiah? Um, I think it was Jeremiah. And the leaders, no, it was Isaiah, excuse me. And the leaders, um, God was rebuking the leaders because um, they, or no, look, I'm forgetting where I'm reading at. <laughs> it was Ezekiel. 
<laughs> Ezekiel's vision. And God took him in a vision and was showing them the leaders and all that they were doing. And they were worshiping these idols and doing all kinds of craziness that was not worshiping God. And God said to Ezekiel, um, they think I don't see them. And that this here, Paul is saying, God sees me. I'm okay with, with what God sees me doing. I'm not trying to hide from God, and I'm not trying to hide from you. I'm walking erect, upright, even in the face of conflict. We got a way in. God is saying you got a way in, right? Maybe it's not in, you know, your character. Maybe it's in your emotions. You got to weigh in. You got you to gotta switch over from those negative emotions to some healthy emotions. How am I going to do that, Kim? You're going to do that by, oh, by, by reflecting. You're going to do that by saying, okay, well, why am I sad? Why am I sad? And you got to tap in. Get to the root of that. And then you need to get the word of God on happiness and joy. And you need to begin to confess the word of God over your mouth right? Oh, over your life. Confess the word of God over your life. You got to tap in to you. You have to be to the point where you're saying, God, why am I feeling this way? Why do I keep doing this this way? And begin to write it out. Do, do some self-reflection because what you won't confront, you're not going to conquer. And Apostle Paul is saying, look, I have a track record. All while this conflict is going on and people are misusing us and abusing us, I can still, I still have the, I still can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I don't, I didn't spaz out, but I walked upright in my integrity, right? And we know he's doing that by the power of the Holy Ghost. So he goes on to say the God who calls us into his own kingdom, the rule and reign of Christ in our hearts and our minds, um, and then he talks about God calling us into a place of glory, right? And I love this word. This word comes from a Greek word, doxa, um, meaning opinion, always a good opinion. It means praise, honor, glory, divine quality, the unspoken manifestation of God, splendor, exercising personal opinion, which determines value, what evokes good opinion, opinion. That something has inherent, 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 intrinsic worth. God's glory, right? The weightiness of God, the beauty of God, the majesty of God. He, Paul is saying, you got to walk worthy because God has invited us into his kingdom. So that means you need to learn how to be a citizen of God right here on earth. Even in the face of 2020, even in the face of conflict, even in the face of whatever's going on personally in your life. Apostle Paul is putting a demand on them. Hey, he's saying, look, we're going through too, but we're yet walking upright. We're yet walking with integrity. We're yet honoring our relationship with you by being honest, by being tactful, um, by walking in integrity. He goes on to say, for this reason, we also thank God without ceasing, because when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you welcomed it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which also effectively works in you who believe. Oh, that's so powerful, my God. He said the word of God works in you effectively. When you believe it, it works in you effectively when you believe it. So I might be feeling some kind of way, but if I get the word on it and I believe it, it's going to work in me effectively. Woo! And there's going to be a shift and a change. And what I was struggling with, I'm not going to be struggling with no more. I'm just going to be going along my ways. I'm confessing the word. I'm believing the word. I'm deciding to live the word. That word is working in me effectively. By the power of the Holy Spirit. So, weigh in. Weigh in. Um, I talked about walking worthy. Um, to weigh in is assigning um, value. It's like, okay, 
is the, is me whining and feeling so bad for the last seven days worth losing the blessing of God? Or do I need to weigh in and say, God, you know what? I'm struggling right here. Let me ask for some help. Because I know you didn't call me to be a whiner. You called me to be a winner. So how can I close the gap? And I love Apostle Paul here because he's like, look, let's, let's go back to it one more time before I hop off. So I'm about to hop off. For you yourselves know, or wait, am I in the right place? Yes, for you yourselves know, brethren, that our coming to you was not in vain. He's like, everything I'm doing as a believer, as a Christian, it's not in vain. But even after we had suffered before and were spitefully treated at Philippi, he was going through some things. As you know, we were bold in our God to speak to you the gospel of God in much conflict. So there were some things going on. It wasn't like all smooth sailing as he was preaching the gospel and ministering to people. For our exhortation did not come from error. I wasn't in error. I wasn't in uncleanness. And I was, in, was not in any deceit. But as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel, even so we speak not as pleasing men, but God who tests our hearts. He's like, we're not out here trying to flatter people. We're not out here um, being covetous. God is our witness. We don't, we don't seek glory from men or from you, but we're living upright. We're being gentle among you, right? We're, we're making whatever we need, we're making that known. We're, there's no shifty eyes and none of that going on, right? He's saying, we care about you. We're in relationship with you. He's saying we work, right? We work. We're, we're not trying to get over on you. We work. We work a job. I love how he is displaying his character. He's being a model for them, even going through situations. I love it. I love it. I love it. So weigh in. We got to weigh in. I love how he's, he, Apostle Paul is teaching us through the word tonight. He's saying you got to weigh in. You may be going through some stuff, but check your character, check your attitude, check your emotions, because you are made in the image and the likeness of God. You are a believer. You are called, and God is going to continue to call you. So you you may have to take a little break. You know, you be whining for a minute and not doing what God has called you to do, but you got to weigh in because God expects us to grow and be mature believers. We go from glory to glory, from faith to faith. We're not called to be babies all the time. And we have to accept that place of maturity. Woo, glory to God. I felt that again. Thank you, Jesus. We have to accept that place of maturity in God. And as we do that, God is right there walking alongside, alongside with us. So weighing in as the assessment in keeping with how something weighs in on God's um, balance scale of truth how something weighs in on God's balance scale of truth so if you're having some off thoughts or some off beliefs ask yourself how is this weighing in on God's balance scale of truth if I'm you know like like my thoughts is like here God's truth is up here how is this weighing? I'm not weighing in right like I need to get some balance to bring that here to align that as a mature believer right who knows how to eat some meat and take in some milk and get the help you need by leaning into God by talking to God by listening to God by soaking in his presence by getting your worship music on right making that intentional effort you know what I love about God? What I love about God is when I make an intentional effort to be in his presence, like it's not 9,000 hours before it's like, oh, God, thank you. You know, your presence is here. I'm just, I'm with you. I'm, I'm soaking it in. I'm taking it in. You know, I can hear you. Walking with God is not about religion. It's about relationship. He wants you to show up so he can show up. Glory to God. So... We need to be operating by offsetting weights. What weight do we need to get rid of? What weight do we need to add on? So instead of like that boxer, instead of being in the middleweight category, we now walk as that heavyweight, right? Um, where do you need to shift? 
Where do you need to take weight off? Where do you need to add weight? Where do you need to add on things that are going to support your maturity? Foster your maturity. Cultivate your maturity. Cultivate your vision. Cultivate um, your life voice. Cultivate your self-worth and your value. What do you need to add on to that? Right? Um, and I think it's Romans 8 talks about how, you know, when we go through different situations, it talks about them as birth pangs. Like the earth right now is definitely having some birth pangs with all of this coronavirus and injustice and all, all of these things going on. Birth pangs, right? So we all go through difficult times. Um, and we all feel that within. But that's when we got to lean in even the more, okay? Um, because we know, I love the verse that says, God has put eternity in our heart. So as believers, we know that there's a, another level. We got to lean in, right? We got to do what Apostle Paul is teaching us to do. To, to walk upright, even through conflict. We got to lean into that maturity. We got to weigh in. Woo, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Because the Bible teaches us that we are enlarged in the waiting. When we're going through that little tough situation, and I don't mean to minimize any situation in our lives, because I've gone through some things in 2020, and yeah, there you go. Um, but the Bible teaches us that we are enlarged in our waiting like a pregnant woman. When that pregnant woman is waiting, she's not getting smaller. She's getting bigger because she's about to deliver something, right? So we don't want to forfeit. Whoo, glory to God. Mm, tada basaya, glory to God. We don't want to forfeit what we're about to deliver because we won't weigh in with whatever it is we need to add on, you know, whether it's integrity, whether it's in our character, whether it's in our emotions, and we need to get that healing and that wholeness from the word of God and by the spirit of God, by sound leadership, by good support systems, by somebody telling you, sis, you are out of, you're just not right right now. <laughs> you're, you're not right right now. You need to get it together. <laughs> we need that. As much as we need comfort, much as we need encouragement, much as we need edification, we also need course correction, right? Course correction. And be able to take that. When I was younger, I, I had such a hard time with course correction. I had such a hard time with people giving me feedback because I wasn't healed yet. And I thought somebody was always out to get me because I had grown up around such critical uh, voices. And so anytime somebody says something to me, I was like, ah. you know, I didn't take it in. And so what could have grown me, right? What could have grown me? Now I'm hindered because I didn't. I didn't take those good seeds of feedback in to weigh in and get up to the next level. Get my weight up. Get your weight up. Get your weight up. Stop whining. Sometimes it's like we got to stop whining. Stop complaining. What's coming out of your mouth? If you don't want to see it, don't say it. Okay? Seriously. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Come on, somebody. Glory to God. And if you are finding your conversation is off and you know when it's off, get your heart, get your heart right. Get your heart before God. Like, God, why is this in my heart? And I find that the word of God is the plumb line. When I get in the word of God, I'm like, ooh, yeah, let me stop and pray right now. <laughs> let me stop and pray right now. <laughs> you know, get that out of my heart, whatever it is. Get the junk out of my heart. Get that, you know, pride. Get that self-righteousness. Get that lies. Get that... Uh, deceit, whatever it is, whatever it may be for you, whatever it may be for me, get it out of my heart, Lord. It's the word of God. It's the plumb line. So we're enlarged in the waiting to birth what God has placed on the inside of us, the seeds of his word, right? We just learn here tonight that he's calling us. He calls us into his kingdom. He calls us into his glory. How are we going to birth what he has given us to birth? If we won't step up to that next place, if we won't accept his invitation, right? I heard uh, this man of God say he was preaching. He was like, God gives great gifts, but they're not wrapped. No, what did he say? He said, God gives great gifts. They're wrapped well, but then when you open it, it's like, ooh, 
this isn't a coworker I don't want to deal with. <laughs> you know, this is like he'll give you a gift of, you know, prophecy, but then you got to go through like nine years of building and, and character building and all of this. He gives great gifts. But man, but you know what? It's for our good. We are enlarged in the waiting. And the more joyful we become as we accept our yes, the more joyful we're going to come. Why? Because of that fellowship. That fellowship. God can give you that peace that surpasses all understanding. What did Paul say? Man, I was in conflict. They treated me wrong. But I am not going to allow that to have any bearing on how I come into your space. I'm not going to start treating you wrong because they did me wrong. And that's heavy. Because I know for me, I've done that before, especially in my younger life. I'm like, they did me wrong, so everybody else in my past is going to get it. And sometimes I did it unknowingly. Like, I just didn't know any better, right? And it was like, oh, that's just me. It wasn't just me. And so all those layers had to be peeled off. And sometimes our layers, even as we get up in God and we believe God and we've been walking with God, there's more layers. And we got to be open to God. I was just praying this morning. And I was like, man, I don't want to deal with that right now. I don't want to talk about that. And the Spirit of the Lord began to deal with me. Before you know it, it was, it was done. It was a wrap. It was like weeping and tears. and <laughs> But I opened that thing and let allow God to have it. And what I know about God is, baby, his exchange rate is so much better than what we feel like we want to keep. So when you give it to God, it's like multiplied deliverance, multiplied freedom, multiplied liberty, multiplied wisdom. It's like, man, I've been holding on to this all this time. What am I losing by holding on to this? Or what am I gaining by holding on to this? Unnecessary weight. And we can trust God with our hearts. And as we do that, we'll, we'll grow up into him. And be able to trust him like he's calling you to that next level of maturity. When you walk with God, you realize, ooh, this is kind of scary. But I trust you so I know I'm going to be okay, right? I know I'm going to expand in the waiting. I know that I, I'm going to come into seasons of momentum. And I wrote down here that the Spirit of God helps us along the way in the waiting. And he keeps us present before God. Every detail of our life is worked into something good. And we know that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Come on, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. That's good. And we know this. There's no question about it. Every detail that I'm going through right now that's causing me trouble or pain or a tough time, God's going to take those very details Boom, and work something good out of it. Woo, glory to God. He's going to work something good out of it. We don't know what it's going to be on the other side of it. But the promise is something good is going to be worked out of this. I don't know what it is. But by faith, I believe something good, some promotion, some good, some excellence, something praiseworthy is coming out of this. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Psalm 37 and 23 says this, the steps of a good man are directed and established by the Lord. And he delights in his way and blesses his path. That means our steps are firm when we're in God. Um, this word is a Greek word, kum, properly to be erect, to stand perpendicular, to be set up, right? So, we have, that makes me think that, okay, we have our life, we have God's word, and they're going to meet by faith, because we have to do this by faith, and as we do it by faith, they're going to meet right at the right position, right? Like that 90 degree angle, and we will be upright, right? God's going to position us in our place of maturity, of prosperity of whatever it is right um and we have that promise we have that promise so paul said that you would walk worthy of god 
who calls you into his own kingdom and glory. Wow, that makes me think, what a position. You have called me into your rule, into your reign, into your kingdom. I am loved. I am made in your image and your likeness. I am your masterpiece created for good works before the foundation of the world. And I can't just stay a baby all the time. I need to grow up into some things, right? I like how Apostle Paul says, hey, look, we're not here to be a burden on you. We're adults. We're going to preach the gospel and work. And, and we could, as apostles, put some demands out here. But we're not doing that. We want to be a model for you, a model of leadership, a proper model of leadership. Okay? So, that is the word tonight. Thank you for hanging in there with me. Hello, Nicole, Amber, Carolina, and Latasha, and everybody who's going to join in on the replay. Thank you for joining in tonight. I hope that I've um, said something um, by the Spirit of the Lord that has encouraged your heart, that has built you up. So that you can go further in God, that you can weigh in, that you can walk in your um, mature place in God, that you can walk in the strength of God. Because I believe that we can do nothing within and of ourselves once we come into the knowledge of God. And we shouldn't want to because we didn't call ourselves. God called us and he called us to be fruitful. He called us to multiply. He called us to have dominion. He called us to subdue. But we can only do that by his power, by his might, by his strength. And as we tap into that. Wow. Wow. What does the Bible say? All things are possible with God. What is left? There's nothing left undone. Whatever your situation is, whatever my situation is, nothing is impossible with God. We just have to assure that we get out of fear. We weigh in, right? We take in the seeds from the word of God and we step into what God has for us by faith. Get out of the fear and get into the faith. We do it by faith. By believing the right way. When we believe right, we can think right, we can act right, experience right, right? Experience the manifested promises of God. And we just got to know. Know that we know that we know. If God said it, that's it. I haven't always been at the place I am now in my faith. I've been at the place where, like the man said, I believe. Uh, help my unbelief. And I prayed that, I prayed that, I prayed that, I prayed that. Until my faith was solid. And faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So I would get in my word and I would read it out loud. I would listen to sermons. And, and so my faith could be built up. So that whatever I was believing God for, I was solid on that. Like, okay, it is what it is. I, I just simply believe God. It's done. In here, in here, done. I don't expect anything less than the manifested promises of God. And that takes faith. And it also takes maturity. It also takes walking with God, trusting God. He loves you. God loves you. I'm going to hop off tonight. Um, I feel like I want to pray. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you tonight, Lord, for all that um, are listening in tonight, are live with me tonight. Father, it's not us who knows what to pray or how to pray, but it's only by your spirit. So, we thank you, God. We thank you. We thank you. Mm. Glory to God. We bless you, God. We thank you. I lift up your people tonight. Father, where there may be any struggle, where there may be any situation that they're going through, where there may be some crutches or some things that they're having trouble letting go of. I pray that they would lean into you by faith. I pray that they would accept that you are there, willing and waiting for them. You are there to grab their hand. You said you will uphold us with your righteous right hand. Woo, glory to God in the name of Jesus. That you are there, willing and waiting to be with us, to commune with us, to hear from us and to speak to us. I pray that you would strengthen them tonight, strengthen us in our inner man, that we can stand up in what you are calling us to stand up in and mature and walk in our integrity and walk tactfully as we go about living for you. I pray for the strength of God. I pray for the wisdom of God. I pray for the light of God to come into our minds, come into our hearts. And dispel every darkness, all the darkness, all the lies 
And I release and loose the truth of God tonight. Mm. Glory to God. I release and loose the truth of God tonight. Our word is truth. We are sanctified by your truth. Let not the enemy come and steal any word from us tonight. Anything that is ministered to us tonight, God, don't let the enemy steal it. But let it be sealed right now by the blood of Jesus. I speak health over these, your people. I speak life. I speak peace. I speak your goodness. I speak prosperity. I speak your love. Oh, glory to God. I decree your love over your people tonight that every void is filled with your love. Nothing shall separate us from the love of God tonight or at any other time in Jesus' name. I pray for your comfort to come to your people tonight in Jesus' name. And I pray that we lack nothing. I pray that you gird us up in the loins of our mind. So that we can serve you with a sound mind. We can make sound decisions and wise decisions. I pray that you will bless us, Father, in these times with your wisdom to build our lives and build what you've called us to build. That you will bless us with your understanding that we will be established and bless us with your knowledge to fill our lives with all pleasant and precious riches. Help us to be witnesses for you, Lord Jesus, in every area of our life. I'm filling us with your spirit. Some of us need a refilling. Fill us again, Lord, in Jesus' name. And Father, we repent of anything that we are holding so tight to that we cannot get to that next level. We're sorry, Lord. We repent. We renounce it. And by faith, we step into our next place with you. We step into that mature place with you. We step into that place of faith where we know that the steps of a good man is ordered by the Lord and you delight in every way and every detail of our lives. And we give you glory for that, Lord. We thank you for the outcomes, the manifested promises, precious promises of God in all of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, people of God, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for joining in. We bless God tonight. We thank God for his word. We thank God for his presence. And we believe God. Let it not be otherwise. Believe God. Believe God. All right. Hopping off. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.